This is the second video in my series showing you how to download, install and configure Cisco Viral. If you haven't watched the first video, then please go and watch that. I've linked it here and below so that you can see the initial part of the download, installation and configuration of Cisco Viral. In this video, I'm continuing the series and I'm gonna show you how to license the Viral server and then I'm gonna show you how to configure the Cisco routers and switches that we added to a Viral topology. So two big things in this video, I'm gonna show you how to license the Viral server and I'm gonna show you how to configure the Cisco routers and switches and verify connectivity between the devices in our Viral topology. Okay, so let's get started. Now probably the hardest part of the initial setup is the licensing. Now if I try and start up this topology by clicking on simulate start lab, notice I get an error message system not licensed. You have to license your system before you can start using it. This product uses smart licensing. I'm gonna click register to register a license. Now in this example, I've been given a token from the developers. I'll add a link below this video to a licensing video for Cisco Viral once the product is live to show you the process if it's different. But basically you need to get a token from the Viral website. So all you need to do is paste the token in that you've been given and then click register to register your product with Cisco Smart Licensing. Once it's registered, it'll say registration status registered, license authorization status authorized. You'll see your smart account details. The virtual account I'm using here is from one of the viral developers. So now that my license has been authorized, I can go to lab setup and select my lab and click simulate and click start lab. My computer's CPU is starting to go crazy now. I should be using Cisco Viral on a computer with more RAM, but I wanted to simply show you the full process of getting a Viral up and running. Okay, so it took my computer a while to boot up these devices because I'm not using the recommended minimum amount of RAM, but that's okay for this demonstration. Notice I've got a little green tick on my devices, and now when I hover over the device, I could either stop it or I could open up a console. And this changes to a black screen. I can click open console. I'll move this up because my resolution is quite low on this laptop. Okay, so one issue I've been having is I'm using the Brave browser here and it's causing all kinds of issues when I try and open up a console to the device. I had to lower my shield in Brave so that I can access the terminal. So you probably don't wanna use Brave. So I'm actually gonna close this down. So what I'm gonna do rather than use Brave is start Google Chrome. And I'm gonna to navigate to that viral server and log in with my username of admin, password of Cisco123. And I'm gonna open up my topology. And as you can see, the devices have booted I can see green ticks next to the devices. I can move the topology around by simply clicking in this white space and dragging the devices around. I could add a node, but I'm gonna collapse that. I'm gonna move this up because my resolution on this laptop isn't great. Now notice in my lab info, I can see four nodes, three links, 20 interfaces. Simulate allows me to start, stop, or wipe a lab. I can see my nodes and I can see, I can see that they've booted. I can see their uptime and CPU utilization. But let's click on one of the devices and notice I have this option to open up a console. So I'm gonna click on the device and open up a console. So click open console. And I need to press enter to activate this terminal. And as you can see right there, I'm asked, do I want to enter the initial configuration dialog? I'm gonna say no. I'll click on iOS V1, open up a terminal, press enter, and once again, bypass the initial configuration dialog. So back on my first device, you can see it's busy booting up. 
Now notice this is clipped here. It's not looking very good. So I'm going to auto select the columns and the rows. So 80 and 24 rows. These error messages are typical when you don't have enough RAM or CPU in your computer. This is a problem, not with viral, but with the physical hardware that I've got. I'm getting a lot of errors here about tasks taking a long time and it's running quite slow. So I'm going to type enable, type conf t, give the router a name, router one, interface gigabit zero zero. That's the interface that I use under connectivity. I can see that gigabit zero zero is connected to gigabit zero zero on the switch. I'm going to no shut that interface and give it an IP address of let's say 10111. Just keep it very simple. Press tab and notice slash 24 mask. So that's my IP address. Show IP interface brief. There are my interfaces. That interface is up. Now, please notice I'm doing everything through my browser here. I'm not running any local software apart from Chrome. Everything is running currently in my browser. I'm going to click iOS v1 and I'm going to open up a console to that device. Notice name is router. So let's give this a host name of router2. Interface gigabit 00. Connectivity once again shows me that this route is connected via gigabit 00 to the switch on gigabit 01. So I'll go back to the console. No shut interface, IP address. Let's say 10.1.1.2 slash 24 mask. Type end and I should hopefully be able to ping router one through those two switches now and I can. So notice router two can ping router one. I'll save the config of router two, go back to router one or iOS v0, ping 10.1.1.2. Wrong IP address there. So that should be Two ten one one two that works. Now the node info currently is iOS v zero. Let's make that router one. Let's click on this guy. Make him router two. So I'm simply editing everything through the GUI here. I'm not doing anything through a local thick client. Everything is being done through the browser. So by simply clicking on a device and going to console, I can access the console of that device. So again, router one can ping router two. Let's create a loopback on this router. So interface loopback zero, IP address quadruple one, 255, 255, 255, 255, slash 32 mask. And actually let's run OSPF here. So router OSPF one network, and I'll enable OSPF on all interfaces in area zero. And I'll save that config. Go to router two. I'm looking at the console. So interface loopback zero, IP address quadruple two. Router OSPF one network. And I'll enable OSPF on all interfaces and I'll save the config. Back on router one, show IP route. We haven't learnt any OSPF routes yet. Show IP OSPF neighbor. We are at two-way drother at the moment. Status changed to X start. Router two is the designated router on the segment. Now again, this laptop doesn't have enough RAM in it. I'm running below the minimum recommended RAM for viral. So it's running a bit slower than I would have expected. OSPF adjacency has now been formed. We've gone from loading to full. So show IP OSPF neighbor, notice full DR, show IP route. We've got a OSPF route that's been learnt. So I should be able to ping the loopback of router two, which I can. I'll click on router two and I'll ping the loopback of router one, and that works. Okay, so that was a basic demonstration of Cisco Viral. I've shown you how to download VMware Workstation Player. I've shown you how to download Cisco Viral. 
the interface may be slightly different when the when viral goes live. I've shown you how to import viral into VMware Workstation Player. I've shown you how to license the viral server. You the token process may be slightly different once again. Use the link below this video to see another video where I show you the updated licensing information if it's changed. But it's very simple to build a topology in Cisco Viral. Interface is very nice. I can go back to Lab Manager. Under Tools, notice there are a whole bunch of options here. I can see my licensing information. I can see system administration information. Like I can download Labs as an example. There's a whole bunch of options in Cisco Viral. I'll talk more about the Cisco Viral options in subsequent videos, but I simply wanted to show you how to get Cisco Viral up and running initially. I think Ralph and Simon and the Cisco Viral team have done a fantastic job here. Fantastic product, looks good, has all the images built into it. The licensing process is a lot easier than it was in the past. Fantastic product. I'd highly recommend that you use Cisco Viral. This is going to give serious competition to GNS3 and even G. And I'll probably be using Cisco Viral more and more now because it's a Cisco official product. Now, Cisco Viral supports a whole bunch of devices. We've got WAN emulators. We've got devices such as Ubuntu servers here. So I could access an Ubuntu server directly within Cisco Viral. There are unmanaged switches, various other devices. You can add your own devices to Cisco Viral as well. But notice Cisco devices such as ASAs are also built into Cisco Viral and are available within Cisco Viral. So you can build fantastic Cisco topologies directly within Viral. Great product, highly recommend Cisco Viral. I personally will be using Cisco Viral more and more. Highly recommend this product. Yeah, yeah.